Welcome. Welcome to Scotch with Bob and Matt. And you're here with uh, Roderick the Red out here at the Celtic shop in downtown Dunedin. A uh, little statue here was donated by the New World Celts, which we're members of with the uh, Scotch with Bob and Matt. And it was created by our current vice president, Jay Archer. He did a fine job of uh, Rowdy, Roddy Red. Yep. Just Roddy Red, I don't know. Anyway, um, so he stands proudly outside of the, uh, the Celtic shop of Dunedin. And we're gonna go inside, have a little scotch. With the uh, Celtic shop, we're going to do a little uh, sampling of the Glen Moray, uh, the Elgin Classic, and this is the sherry cask strength. And so uh, Matt's going to tell you a little bit about uh, Glen Moray and uh, from Elgin. And the discussion also is Glen Moray, Glen Murray. Yeah, we're not Scottish uh, from Scotland, so they pr they pronounce it Glen Murray. Okay, but when I say Elgin. Moray, Scotland. I don't say Murray. So anyway, the the Glen Moray. This one is the uh, the sherry cask finish. In uh, our fall tasting, if you're familiar with uh, the whiskey tastings that we do with the New World Celts, we did a whole line of uh, the Glen Murray tastings, um, and the uh, cask series. We did the sherry cask, the Chardonnay cask, the Port cask, and the Cabernet cask, as what we started with. The sherry cask is one of the favorites. Of course, everyone loves a sherry cask finish. Um, when we did that, we started out with all four of these, and I thought that one was quite delicious. This one was probably the best one of the, of the batch. Uh, they have a port, a uh, Chardonnay, and a Cabernet. Cabernet. And the port was quite good also. Yes. But today we decided we would talk about the, uh, the sherry cask, because I happen to have a bottle of the sherry cask still. Which always is nice to have some. Uh, Glen Moray, uh, this is a non age statement scotch. It uh, probably was in a uh, second fill keg for about six to eight years. And then it spends about uh, nine months to a year in the sherry butt to uh, help give it the uh, final finish of flavor. And of course, Bob Bob likes to always do the uh, tasting notes so you know what you're tasting and what you're supposed to smell on the nose, what you're supposed to taste on the palate, and sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't. But Some of them are fun. I uh, What I try to do is I go through about 10 or 12 different reviews, and then I pull a lot of the notes out from other people, and I add some of my own. Uh, we've been doing this for 24 years now. Matt is now... Uh, uh, come on as my assistant here as a scotch master and doing a great job. He's been here for about 10 or 12 years now. Um, started out as one of the my faithful uh, fans of coming to all my tastings. And I finally uh, coerced him into uh, starting to present uh, some scotches. So, and it's his fault that I have so many of my own. I used to have just a bottle of Jameson. Now, sadly, I have over 60 bottles of whiskey at home. All Bob's fault. And uh, his wife Amy says the same thing, it's my fault. It is your fault, yes. No uh, anyway, on this one here, this is like a, a little pale gold in color. And uh, it's got it a nice have, nose to it. does have a very nice color. Some dried fruit. Decent legs. Not stewed fruit though, I don't think. No. There's some grassy notes here, some uh, Somebody said the hay barn. I'm not sure if I got the hay barn. I, I don't know hay barn. People also use things like bananas. I never get the bananas. Well, this one here is dried apricots, uh, some green tea. Um, I think I got the apricots. I get a little mead in this one.
So that's a little young. As you said, probably, what, like six years? Mm -hmm. Six to eight, somewhere in there. They're not really saying. But it is a younger scotch. There is no uh, older, a lot of uh, distilleries they'll put in uh, into a 12-year-old or 15-year-old. There could be 20 and 25-year-old scotches that were kind of added to the uh, distiller's blend to uh, uh, give it a little bit better flavor. And smooth it out a little. Smooth it out a little. Whereas the uh, Glenmore has not. There's uh, the straight um, age on this one of about six years, and it's kind of young for a scotch. It is. They have they have all of their variety, of course. Uh, they have their heritage collection that has a, a 12, a 15, and 18 year, and then they have the some of the the better versions. They have even 25 years um, that we've tasted. That was. Quite delicious. We like that one. I get a little in the flavor. I get a little uh, nuttiness. Uh, not an I'm more of a walnut, uh, a hard nut. Hmm. I don't know. Definitely uh, the grassy nose comes back um, in the taste. Also, it's got an herbal. Uh, taste to it. This is what 24 years of doing these tastings gets you. He's able to discern all of these little bits out of this. Uh, I'm more of the, yeah, I like this. Meh, it's not so. All right, I like, okay, I drink that one. Well, passing it over your tongue, it hits different spots in your tongue that uh, bring out the flavors. It's just something that you can. Uh, Try to uh, to learn and uh, develop uh, over the years. Bob has uh, done games with us to get us to try to learn how to get these flavors, and very, very, very tasty. Well, we're just going to be finishing up here, and we thought that we would bring in Lynn, who is the uh, owner of the shop here at the Celtic Shop. Come on in the middle. Of the Rose between two thorns here, uh, sure. <laughs> and uh, we want to thank you for allowing us to uh, take over your shop for a day and uh, and have some fun here. A little bit of time, hopefully not, yeah. not a day. <laughs> you can spend all day here if you want. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about Duncan? Um, yes, a local artist, Dee, um, who is at the Institute for Creative Arts, uh, made him, and it's a multimedia so it's got pebbles, stained glass. Um, I gave her the bagpipe that uh, nice. that he's using. He's even and, got tile. Yep, and, and it's a California wren feather. On his, uh, and she bought the uh, brace, the, the leather bracelet he has on from me. <laughs> so, um, and I had a naming contest for him, and the name that we got. The name that one is Duncan Braveheart. Duncan Braveheart. Yes. So, <laughs> Love it. And then Dee made the little plaque to put on him. So I liked him so much I ended up having to buy him. <laughs> well, he's, he's a beautiful addition to the shop. Yes. As well as uh, Roddy the Red outside. So. Yes. Red Roddy got me all kinds of publicity when I had the naming <laughs> contest for him because the original man was stolen. Yes, I remember that, yep. sadly. Well, I apologize for that. Um, one thing we should always do is we should turn off our cell phones uh, as we start filming. Uh, no one ever calls me until I'm filming. And uh, we love the story of that. Love your shop here. Uh, you need to come down here to uh, Dunedin. And uh, on the finish of this, I got a little chocolate on this one here. And uh, a nice uh, little sweet notes and a little cinnamon on it. On the finish. A little chocolate, I don't get a cinnamon. Okay, so that's that's fine. Okay, we can we can differ on all of these as everyone's palate is different. Everyone's palate is different, and we also you know taste and smell things a little differently. And so, uh, if you don't get what I talk about, go with Matt, and whether you like it or not, <laughs> it and, uh, smells really good. <laughs> it does smell good. We could pour you some. It's a little early, I know. It's a little early. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time. And remember to follow us on New World at Dunedin New World Celts on the website and Whiskey Tastings presented by the Dunedin New World Celts 
on Facebook.